Hi, in today's lecture, we're going to talk about Autodesk Revit Architecture Elementary course. I'm going to continue Unit 3, Lecture 3, the modeling. And it's the second part, actually, of uh, Part 3. Uh, I just chopped uh, Part 3 into two pieces. Part 1, I just uploaded a couple of minutes ago. And now I'm uh, uploading uh, the second part of it. I just chopped it into two pieces because the software that I'm gonna use for screencast uh, is actually causing some delay if it goes too long. Anyway, so in the second part, we're gonna talk about the polar array, linear array, component model in place, reference of plane, annotation, and duplicating view. That was our project, basically. <clears throat> so I'm gonna make a polar array here, and I'm gonna create a reference of plane, and then create a model place, a component model play in place here which is this uh, LUVA, and then I'm gonna uh, make a linear array for that. Then we're gonna add a basic dimension to this uh, simple uh, house. So that's the topic we're gonna talk about. So let's go to Rivet. And that's where we stopped last lecture. So I'm gonna go to the first floor. And in the component here, I'm gonna go and load family and make sure you are in metric so that's furniture and then tables and i'm gonna pick this guy here table round and i'm gonna place it outside here wherever you want to put it and then Again, component, load, family, and I'm gonna go to furniture again, and this time to seating. And this guy, this chair, the second one. And as I place it, I notice that the back is here exactly, so I'm gonna place it here. And then I'm gonna hit escape twice. I'm gonna select this guy, and then go to array here and I'll, that's the linear one and that's the polar one so I'm gonna hit or the radial I'm gonna pick radial and that's the center of the rotation so I'm gonna click here and drag and make it to the center of the circle as such the number I'll leave it three the most important thing is to pick the last here option so whenever you're gonna start clicking here that's the beginning if I stopped here this will be the last member of the array so let's do that. I will start from here and you notice if I want to make a 360 degree as long as I push here and pass 180 it's gonna reverse itself so it's okay just make it whatever you want here just let's place the last member which is here now you see there's a three I can make that six or whatever like that don't worry now grab this and then keep dragging that slowly till you reach the end try to be a little bit patient with it see now you leave your mouse now we get a parametric polar array or radial array let's make that five see and you can keep changing those members anytime you like around this table let's go that and see that in 3d that's what we got and anytime you will select this you can change I think this here, the, the array uh, number, you can change that to any number and that can you know, correspond to you uh, instantly as you can see. So that's a polar array, a parametric actually polar array. You can change that whenever you want. Now let's do the linear one, but first let me create uh, some, uh, let's say a frame, L-shaped frame here and this time I'm gonna sketch it uh, in the elevation so I actually need a, a specific reference plane here which is a vertical plane a working drawing plane here so I'm gonna go to the first floor and the architectural tab I'm gonna go reference plane and I'm gonna start from here ending up wherever I want so that's a vertical plane. Just select it and just name it. I'll just name it my name. 
so I can remember it. Hit apply now. It got the name of it. So if I go, if I want to work on that, first I need to make it active or set. So if I hit set now and I select it, it's actually even before I select, it's pop up this for me. I can just hit pick and OK. And then I select this guy like that. Or I just can do this by name and then go to the one that I just give my name to it, which is this one. And when I hit OK, immediately it will tell me that you cannot work on this because you have to be looking that way or that way, some 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 view perpendicular to it. So I'm gonna go with the picking south. So it's basically here, and it's the active one now because we set it to it, but we cannot see it. So you can go ahead and work, it's okay. If you are a little bit fussy about that, just go show, and you're gonna see that blue rectangle here which is the reference plane actually it's limitless so don't worry you don't need to extend it it's just limitless just a sample for it I'm gonna zoom in here and uh, in it I need to create uh, a L shape frame so I'm gonna hit component and previously it was just placing a component which is already been made outside that in the rivet family now I'm gonna make a model in place you can categorize it correctly, but for me, I'm not really care about that. So I'm just saying it's a genetic model. You can say it's furniture. You can say it's a massive, whatever you want. But for the sake of uh, quick, we're going to talk about that a little bit more in family editor. So I'm just assuming it's a generic models. You can call it frame A or one. So it's basically extrusion. So just hit exit through and then draw it so I'm gonna assume it's starting from here and let's take this and it's touching the exterior here floor let's go uh, let's say 200 mil or such and then we go up I can't measure here that correctly but anyway let's follow the slab so it's 220 it's okay if you wanted that uh, go precise just select and make this 200 or just follow the slab following the slab will be make, make it more sense i think if you're not cladding this anyway finish it but if you go 250 it's gonna go the other way around and be like protruding away from the face of the elevation so just hit minus here i'm gonna show you later why hit finish technically twice so if you go in the 3d see zoom in here that's the reference plane again so if I hit show here that's the active one it's actually the turn to the ground but anyway if you remember when we picked uh, this guy you see the reference plane here the active one so it's that's why this face the fa that's fa that's the plane that we worked on if we hit positive number for the extrusion uh, minus 250 if you hit positive 250 to go that way and in this case it's going to be away from the elevation and i want it to be in minus so it's going to go that way that's basically good now if i want to go the first floor and try to copy it or make the array of it and i go down it doesn't go because it's actually linked to this reference point so i can make a copy here but I cannot move or copy that way, and that's really bad. And in order to do so, you have to get rid of the reference plane that actually concentrate it. So just delete it, and then now when you select this guy, <coughs> sorry, when you select this guy, you can technically move it wherever you want, as you see because the object that it was linked to it is actually been deleted so I'm gonna select it and we should have delete this guy here so I'm gonna select it go back to the first floor and then
for some reason this guy isn't except to be deleted for some reason anyway I'm gonna select this guy again and go to the first floor and in the array I'm gonna pick this time linear and make sure that the group and associate that one will make it parametric uh, choose this the last you can pick how many you want let's say six for example and I'm gonna start that from this and I'm gonna zoom in till I reach let's say yep come on again yeah, good now we leave it so that's the end of that so it's gonna be exactly flushes with the faces here so if I want to go with a 3d and this guy is still existed weird anyway and that we got our you know uh, linear parametric array anytime you want just select that and you get select this make it 8 for example and it's gonna work perfectly and that's really good option if you are thinking that the client or your, your your professor I don't know depend on you is actually going to change the amount of those if you are like just uh, you know how exactly how much you need you just use copy it's easier this guy is good because it can constrain that to this face into the other face and you can change the number anytime you want Anytime, anyway, this is uh, this is really uh, a good way of uh, uh, having a good example actually for polar and linear array. Now the last part actually is to have some dimensioning. So if I go to the ground floor, and you might notice that uh, there is a full horizontal and vertical grid, and they are located correctly. If you go to the first floor, for example. You might find that different. Actually, it's the same here. Let's go to the roof and check. Uh, it isn't, and you can see that this is not being bubbled, and the vertical is missing. So that's really interesting. So let's try to have a look at the east elevation, and we're gonna see that the those three actually the ABC, which we saw them in the roof, actually above the highest level. That's why they are shown, and if you compare that to the south elevation, where you have to see the one and two and three, for example, you see those bubbles are lower than the roof. That's why you don't see them in the roof. So push them up so they intersect with the roof itself. Now, if you go to the roof, you're supposed to see them. See one, two, three. I know with other bubbles, but anyway, let's go to the ground. Now, whatever you've done here, you can just go ahead and select those three and hit control and select those three and then hit here, propagate extents. And I'm gonna select the first one and then hit shift and then select the last one and then tick to select all the horizontal uh, plans that we got. Hit OK and then I go to the roof and see whatever setting we have there, the bubbles. The distance if anyone want anyone of them broken it's gonna just duplicate that to the whole levels of ceiling floors and uh, normal uh, ground floor plan or first floor the normal plans or the ceiling plans that's easier and that's better than repeating this process and measuring the dimension for each level and now we have a three it's easy but imagine if you have a tower and you have a hundred level it's gonna be very gonna be a very painful process to do Anyway, so that's the first thing with the levels, uh, sorry, with the grids, and how you make them the same on all levels. Uh, now for the dimension, and again, it's an annotation. So basically, this guy is the most of what we use. That's for linear. That can follow any any slope. Uh, this is for uh, actually measuring the angle. So you can uh, just you know like it's a ninety degree. Uh, what else? I think they are self-explanatory. That's for radius. That's for diameter. Diameter. That's for arc. If you have an arc, you want to know how how much actually it is as a length. That's really important. So I can just place one here and click again and click again. 
to get this level I can just uh, place it wherever I want see that's the outside and that's on the wall and of course I'm clicking more than one time if you click and then you move your hand and then you click and then you remove your hand and then you click you can get it in this form I like it in this one that's why I keep clicking all the points in the same place anywho that's the landing for the for the ramp I can measure here the curb and measure here the street and it's a common mistake it's a common mistake to do is to click that in a place where you don't have a, a floor or a slab so see it doesn't work here it works here and so on be careful with this I have lots of people complain about that see how it sends the slope it's really really nice anyway so I'm gonna go with a line again and in order to do this is just a matter of keep clicking them and then uh, click outside but let's do let, let me do this uh, if I want to measure this wall from the beginning to the end I can just try to hover above that and you notice I can't sense the edge of the wall so I have to press tab see and then click and then come here and then I have to again I can sense it it sends the the most important reference plane inside which is I think the wall center in here so again tab and then select and then place it whatever you want outside like such here or I can just uh, click a line and here instead of saying uh, that's for the whole wall center I just can go wall faces and here entire wall and then select this guy all of it see a little bit faster so you need to specify the wall face and the entire wall and you click outside that's it another trick here to do in annotation keep that on wall faces entire wall and in the options you go opening and then width that's what that's really you're gonna love it really look so instead of go nuts and hit the face and then this point and then this point and then this point and then this point welcome to AutoCAD you know don't AutoCAD rivet please just like click here you see lovely you know very powerful tool and very fast one click and that's it it can sense all the opening in the wall and measure it up for you so now if I select this guy and this guy this guy and nothing here so sad this guy all right and I want to duplicate that as we've done with those guys uh, you need to go to copy here as long as you are not copying in the same level so this is not your friend this is not the copy you look for you need to copy this to the clipboard and then paste here the drop down menu and then select align view same technique shift and the last one and okay and then rivet go crazy a little bit trying to copy this it's trying actually to find where it's been suitable to copy it so that's from the that's where we launch it from the ground floor let's go to the first floor and see it's it's almost possible to measure this this and this if I go to roof where is there is no wall in here or whatever it was see it doesn't it doesn't copy the dimension to it and that's really good and smart because it know where to put it as a dimension or where to ignore it actually I can do the same thing with the elevation so if I go to south you know like uh, this for example you can keep one of them shaded you can just right click on that and hit uh, duplicate view and then duplicate you know that we created one that's just we work on and one for presentation purposes that you can go and change that into shaded to add some color to it and then maybe you can go add dimension here like this you know you can add the dimension here also or you can now sense the heights of the things here 
and put that aside and add some dimension to whatever masses you can get to give it more detail if you something if you encounter something like that just hit the dimension you see this bubble just push it away like that to get that away of just being uh, crowded so let me check if we covered up all the points so we have detailed annotation we created the uh, duplicating a view and the same thing we talk about the reference of plane model in place and the two types of array so uh, that's it guys we managed to make uh, this